In this video, we are continuing our quiz three review and we'll look at another conditional probability example. So the example says, the weather forecast says there is a 60% chance of rain on any given day. Harry is holding Quidditch practice. On rainy practice days, Ron falls off his broom 41% of the time, but on non-rainy practice days, he stays on his broom 90% of the time. On a randomly selected day, Ron falls off his broom. What is the probability that it was a rainy day? And round to three decimal places. So I want to begin by giving you the chance to try this question. So pause the video for four minutes to try this one. Four, three, two, one. Pause it and try this one for four minutes. All right, so hopefully you tried it for about four minutes or so. And let's talk about it together. So let's begin by labeling some of these events that it's talking about. So let's let, for example, it talks about whether it rains or doesn't rain. So let me let R be the event that it rained on this randomly selected day. And in that context, I could just, re I could just let R complement be the event that it didn't. It didn't rain. If I wanted to choose a new letter for this, like maybe D for didn't rain, I could, but I could equally as well just use the complement. And there's also this matter of, well, does Ron fall off his broom or does he not fall off? So let me let F be the event that Ron falls off. I probably don't want to pick R because I already have an R. So that's why I'm choosing F here for this label. And I can let F complement be the opposite of that. So Ron does not fall off. And if he doesn't fall off, that means he stays on. Ron stays on his broom. Okay. So we are trying to find the probability. So it's asking, what's the probability that it was a rainy day? But it already tells us that Ron falls off his broom, which means this is a conditional probability. And wants the probability that it was rainy or that it rained, given that Ron falls off. Let's put the S a little closer. It falls off. So using our labeling, this is the probability of R given that F occurs. All right. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so I can still see the problem as we start to work through it. So I'm going to do this with in two ways. So attempt one is going to be just using the conditional probability formula directly. And in the second way, we'll use a tree diagram. So I'm after the probability of R given that F occurs. And using my formula for conditional probability, our outcomes here have certain percentages associated with them. So I'm going to use the formula for conditional probability that involves probabilities on the top and on the bottom, rather than the number of outcomes on the top and the bottom, because our outcomes are not equally likely here. Okay, so it's the probability of R intersected with F on top. And on the bottom is the probability that F occurs. Okay. So to find on the top the probability that it's rained and that Ron falls off, let's see. So the problem tells me there's a 60% chance that it rains on any given day. And then later it says, on rainy practice day, so given that it is raining, Ron will fall off his broom 41% of the time. So I would multiply that 0.6 by 0.41 to get the probability in the numerator. For the probability in the denominator, this is the probability that Ron falls off. This one's a, l a little bit trickier because he could fall off if it's a rainy day, but he could also fall off his broom sometimes if it's a non-rainy day. So for right now, I'm gonna put a question mark here. We're not totally sure what this is. I can't just multiply two values like I did in the numerator to get it. So this one in the denominator is not, it's not given 
and not as easy to compute, at least as it was in the numerator. So I'll put a sad face here. Okay, there is a way to do that, <laughs> to still compute it. There's a formula for it. But um, we, we just haven't talked about that in, in class. So I'm not going to rely on that. Instead, there is a really great way that we do know to solve this. And that is going to be my attempt two for this question, which is going to be to use tree diagrams. So attempt two tree diagrams. But I wanted to point out this first attempt because this is a really common thing that will sometimes happen in conditional probability problems. We may try to do it using the formula directly, but we'll run into something and get stuck, or it's just not easy to compute something. And that's a common indicator that, oh, I might want to try a, t a tree diagram. Another thing that's suggesting to do a tree diagram is the fact that there's sort of two stages to what's going on here. There's a matter of does it rain or not rain. And then after that, there's the second stage, which is does Ron fall off or does he stay on? And that's another indicator that we may want to use a tree diagram because we have those stages. Okay, so let's write down a section for where we'll begin. And then let's label these stages. So there's a question of the weather. And then there's a matter of Ron and what happens with him. And then the outcome and the probability. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so from where we begin, the weather could either be rained, which is R, or not rained, which is R complement. And from either of those, either Ron falls, which is F, or he stays on, which is F complement. And the question said that there was a 60% chance that it rains, so our 0.6 here, and that means that it doesn't rain would be 0.4, because those two values have to add up to one. The question also said, on a rainy day, on a rainy day, Ron falls off his broom 41% of the time. So on the R branch, we would go to F, 0.41, that's the probability. So that means the value down here going to F prime would be 0.59 for them to add up to one. And then the question also says that on a, uh, let's see, on a non-rainy day, he stays on his broom 90% of the time. So we'd write 0.9 going to F complement because that's staying on his broom 90% of the time. So that means going to the F here, it's a 0.1 for those to add up to one. Okay, so let's list these outcomes. We have R, F, R, F complement, R complement, F, and then R complement, F complement. Multiplying the probabilities, we get 0 0.6 times 0 0.41, 0 0.6 times 0 0.59, 0 0.4 times 0.1, and then 0.4 times 0.9. And then we can multiply all of these. The first one is 0.246, and then we get 0.354, and then 0.04, and then finally 0.36. Okay, so we got our tree diagram, and then we wanted the probability, let's see, of R, given that F occurs, which is the probability of R intersected with, oops, sorry, this should have been a P first, probability of R intersected with F on the top, Probability of F on the bottom. Okay, so on the numerator, we need the probability that R and F occur, which is this outcome. And so that's this probability. So we get 0.246 that R and F happen. The denominator is the probability that F occurs, the probability that he falls. And that happens in this outcome, for this probability, and as well as this one. F occurs here as well with that probability. So we have to add 0.246 to 0.04. Okay, let me highlight this in blue. And this one I'm gonna do in pink. So the denominator, if we were to work out what that is, is 0.286. And if I divide using a calculator, we get this is about 
eight, six, oh, one. If I go to four decimal places, um, but the question said, I think to round to three decimal places. So at this point I can do that. So rounding this to three decimal places, this would be 0 0.860. The one is small enough where I would not round up. So 0 0.860, that is our answer.